Hi, how's it going? Did you see my MSI Stealth 15 Anim unboxing? If not, click here, go check that out first. If you flat out refuse to, which is fine, I bought two MSIs, first time I've ever had an MSI laptop, first time I've ever had them on this channel. Uh, basically flipped a coin to see which one to open first, Stealth 15M. It, <laughs> it did not go well. All right, so maybe we've got higher hopes for this one, although this product is much cheaper. So this is a Sword 15, which I believe is basically identical to a Katana, uh, other than a couple of minor things like the uh, case on this one is white. I'll pop these specs in a little box here, or perhaps here if I'm feeling annoying. So in this one, we have a fantastic CPU, uh, i7-12700H, 14 core chip, six performance cores, eight efficiency cores. Uh, we've got 16 gigs of memory, which is probably DDR5, have to double check that, it's probably there somewhere, and a uh, RTX 3050 or TI, I'm sure it says there. I will have double checked that. So uh, I'm just going to press on with this one, hoping we have a better time than last time. Perhaps the last video was fun in its own way. I actually buy these laptops with my own money, so whether or not it's just for the purpose of doing reviews, I still don't particularly like receiving expensive dodgy stuff. So anyway, not going to judge this one in advance judge it on its own merits, because that's what's fair. Yeah, I've never seen a uh, MSI sword or a katana before, so this should be, should be pretty interesting. I know a lot of people have these, they're very popular, they sell well, and uh, people seem to really like them. Loud noises. Okay, as always, we've got the slightly more MSI branded box inside the, well, <laughs> That is a huge brand, but uh, let's see what the rest of this one looks like. Come on, big fella. There you go. All right, MSI really keen on this stripey uh, theme lately. Red dragon there. Okay. I do like putting things loosely in these boxes. Not much to see around the outside apart from three MSI logos there. All right, in we go. So I, I do try to cover a lot of these reasonably priced gaming laptops on this channel. And uh, in case you're wondering why, it's predominantly because there are plenty of channels covering, you know, big expensive things that are uh, hopefully normally built well and, you know, reasonably reliable with good warranties. But I know that this sort of segment, MSI Katana, Dell G15, uh, the Lenovo Legion products, like the Legion 5, Acer Nitro, things in that class are the volume sellers. So I think it's very important that we make sure these are actually well-built products that are fit for purpose. And Look, to put it as simply as possible, if you're shopping at this end of the market, there is a chance that you might really need this machine to last a while. Maybe you don't have enough disposable income to just be replacing them every couple of years, right? So I try to focus on products that at least bridge this class. I know you can get these with up to like a 3070, but we're not looking for performance. Uh, well, we wanna make sure that it works well. We're looking for quality, durability, that sort of thing. And at this end of the market, that's the most important thing. I believe, and it's one of the most often overlooked. So, this looks identical to the, oh, it's a different brand. I was gonna say it looks identical to the Stealth 15M's charger. It's made by Delta instead of Shikoni. Yeah, 180 watts. So it's probably probably the exact same spec. Uh, okay. Probably the exact same spec as the one for the Stealth 15M, but built by Delta instead. Delta's a good brand, so we'll take it. Yeah, again, a very nice lightweight charger. Dell's 180 watt chargers are, are much like heavier than this. I don't think they're too much bigger, but they're definitely heavier. So you got a nice little barrel charger there. No USB-C, but uh, it's pretty unusual above about 100 watts at the moment, so that's all good. Move that to the side. 
Jumping back to my rant before about quality and all that, if, if you've never watched one of my videos before, I recommend you go and do that. I am trying to do something uh, different where instead of just showing you endless benchmark charts, we spend a lot more time going over every square inch of every laptop that I check out. You might enjoy it, you might find it boring, you might just want benchmarks. That's cool, head over to Jared's tech. All right, I just realized that's actual lid of a laptop. I somehow forgot it was white while I was talking. Okay, well, it's white. It's very obviously white. Let's get that out. And get a usual little bunch of pamphlets there. All right. Okay, get this. Hopefully, yeah, it looks like it's recyclable plastic out of the way. All right, first impressions is that's really very white. Can these MSI boxes stop littering my desk? Can you see all this? Stop it. Again, if you didn't watch the Stealth 15M video, you might see all these black scuffs. These just came off the, the box for the Stealth. It just, it scuffed my desk up. This one's put a whole bunch of like cardboard fragments all over it. Anyway, this is super duper white and I'm surprised to see that the uh, MSI logo in the lid is actually just embossed. So you can, you can like feel it, but it doesn't like stick out, doesn't have any chrome on it or anything. So not very heavy. That could be a mixed blessing. White. What's with MSI laptops clicking when I move them? All right, that ventilation is phenomenal. So you'll see that the fans are not directly. To set up your device using yeah. the screen reader. That's the, that's the Stealth 15M in the background talking. I, I reset it so I can send it back and now it's talking. I'm gonna shut that up, back in a moment. Depending on who you ask, not naming any names here, uh, some people like to have a bit of a tizzy and start drilling holes in the bottom of laptops that are arranged like this. This one, at the very least, you wouldn't have to do that because look at, look at the amount of ventilation in it. So I've got little speakers here and here aimed directly down. I think you can see there's absolutely no angle on them whatsoever. But we've got some pretty, I guess, reasonably thick feet to keep the laptop up off the desk. I think the, the sound quality is going to be a bit crap. Those speakers that are in there, I recognize them. They're what's in like the Dell G15, uh, other things like that. They're pretty bad. I've also just spotted, I don't know if you can make that out, looks like we've got one, two, three, four screws holding the GPU cold plate on. That's great. MSI only use three screws in a lot of their products. Four is what you need. You can't, you can't just have three screws on a cold plate. It makes the pressure distribution uh, awful. So you've got a socketed Wi-Fi card there, which is surprisingly well ventilated. Pretty nice big fan outlets on the back here. Very, very neat fins you can see none of them are bent let's get right across one of your laptop that's got bent heatsink fins no ventilation on this side but then we've got one more one more air vent there so ports we've got our power adapter port here super speed usb and i can't believe i'm seeing this in 2022 that's a usb 2.0 port seriously guys oh look at that it's it's not uh, it's not clipped together properly on the back. Can you see that? That's what that clicking was when I was moving it. You can't make this stuff up. The first two MSIs I get, and neither of them is. Yeah, can I just clip this back together? Let's find out. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's okay. I won't. I won't entirely hold that against this one because it's fixed. Good. Didn't have to try and unbend it back into shape. Okay, on this side, we've got a battery indicator, a combo headphone microphone jack, a ethernet port, which is cool. It's probably gigabit ethernet, might not be. HDMI of some sort, possibly HDMI 2.1, maybe not. And uh, super speed USB. I I'm gonna say that's probably USB, uh, sorry, HDMI 2.1, because most Ampere equipped laptops seem to uh, have that. Uh, not much else to see on the outside. No card reader on these. I guess most people don't use them anyway. I do. I heard another click. Is there another clip that's not done up properly? I thought that's what 
the, that thing is what that noise was, but yeah, it's clicking when I move it sometimes. Okay. So if you're wondering what the finish looks like on these white machines in person, you've got like a brushed finish down the side. It's all just white plastic, but it's like brushed and then it's matte on top. It's not shiny. Uh, it's not iridescent or metallic or anything. It's just a nice matte finish. Okay, let's open this guy up and uh, see what he looks like inside. Yeah, I heard a noise. Oh, hang on. That's chronic, isn't it? Hmm. A bit of a, a bit of a hinge wobble. I also I, <laughs> I paused when I opened it because I heard a click from this hinge. Oh boy. Oh geez. All right. So what what I can tell you immediately is yeah, this wobble is because these hinges are very obviously bolted into either just straight up plastic uh, inside the bottom case, or there might be like a very thin metal reinforcement, but that's, that's actually, if you can see that, might zoom in quickly. All right, let's center this one. There we go. Yeah, if you can see, there's a bit of, bit of back and forth movement there, which means that where the hinge is actually mounted on inside the case is not very strong. So that's probably a durability concern, but I will not comment on that sort of thing just from a bit of a, a bit of a wobble. It could very well have all metal <laughs> mounts for the, for the hinges. Uh, I'm not feeling too confident that it will, but we'll uh, pull it apart later on for the review and have a better look and make more of an assessment on that. So, Inside, we've got a webcam up the top, as you'd expect, a couple of microphones and a webcam light, but no shutter. Got this little sort of beveled shape on the top. It's not completely square. I think, I think Acer Nitros do that too, don't they? <laughs> Whoa, I'll tell you what. <laughs> this, the smell coming out of this. I feel like I need to. <laughs> I feel like I need to open a window and turn a fan on in this room. That is intense. Um, what is that? It's like plastics off gassing. It could be. It could be paint. I think it's coming from the keyboard, which does have paint on it of some sort. Rather small trackpad. I think they could have fit a. Bit. Oh. Ah. Uh, if, if this tracks well, I'd say it's usable. It definitely doesn't feel as bad as a Dell G15 down here, like on the clicker. It's not it's not as crappy as one of them, but yeah, that's not not a super good trackpad button. Probably a bit too loud too. Anyway, keyboard. It it looks nice at first glance. The font is just the usual MSI one. Uh, I think they use that on. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they use this font on all of their products. That's all right, I, it's, it's a bit better than the um, Stealth 15M's keyboard. I'm surprised they're not just exactly the same, but to me, this one feels a little bit better. It's got, it's got more of a tactile response to it, but that's very, very mushy regardless. Very mushy keyboard deck is, yeah, it's caving in pretty badly in some places. I'm barely even touching it, and it's probably got about millimeter, millimeter, millimeter and a half of deflection into the case. And would you look at the size of this number pad? That's ridiculous. Look at these massive gaps here. To be fair, there's a heat sink here under this plastic. So I guess they probably couldn't have moved the keyboard further over there because that heat sink does go, yeah. It goes, goes pretty far up the side. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, normally I would say a squished number pad is better than no number pad, but uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we've, gotten into the zone of they should have probably just centered the main keyboard and just just shoot that away. That's just silly. I don't know what anything here is. I guess vents or maybe it's just meant to look like vents could just be a styling thing. 
not too sure. Observation I've just made, the plastic in here is not quite as nice as it is on the outside of the screen. It's a bit rougher and perhaps a bit cheaper looking. Or is it painted? I can't tell if this is painted. I think it might be. It looks almost slightly pearlescent. It's kind of hard to tell. So I'm not sure how this will age over time. If it is painted, it would be less, depending on the paint, it would probably be less likely to pick up like yellowing in stains, but more likely to rub off. So I was actually tempted to get one of these with the 3070 in it. Now I'm kind of glad I didn't. It doesn't feel like it should. It feels like in this configuration with the 3050 and the price these go for, this is probably what you'd... I was going to say it's probably about right for that class. I don't know, it feels a bit too cheap to me, but... All right, well, I might just quickly set this up and load a game up onto it and see what we get for performance and thermals. See you shortly. Okay, so I've got this one set up and I've been playing around with it a bit. Uh, so as you can see here, we've got a time spy score of 5,323. Just zoom in a bit on that. So 4,855 by the looks of it for graphics and 11,734 for CPU. So those aren't too bad scores, especially for the hardware that we've got here. I will point out this is just on whatever the default power profile is. Uh, MSI Center, I haven't fiddled with that yet. It's possible that you could crank this up a little bit. And as you can hear there, this is when you back out. That's how loud the fan is in the default mode with uh, dying light running in the background. So it's it's a lot more quiet than I was expecting it to be. So that's definitely a positive. So if I quickly jump back into dying light here, you can see we're so this is the medium preset with DirectX 12 renderer and asynchronous compute turned on, and DLSS at quality. So we're getting at least 60 to about 80 or 90 frames per second in this game. So that's a very good performance there. As you can see, the GPU is only at 60 watts. I'm pretty sure I should be able to crank that up a bit with the MSI Center, but uh, we'll report back on that later. So uh, yeah, between the reasonably quiet operation, um, very good CPU performance and temperatures, I think we're off to a pretty, pretty decent start with this one. Anyway, check back in the next couple of weeks for a full review, including a complete teardown and quality analysis of this one. Until then, stay safe. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.